Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're gonna get our Disney princess on here, especially as it's coming to the end of the year. It's September now, almost December. Holiday themed interactive experiences are a great one and great new update to the Particles GPU, something that everyone has been hoping for to come soon has now arrived, which is the ability to quickly add optical flow right into that new Particles GPU. So let's go ahead and delete everything we got here and get started from scratch. So I have my NDI input here, which is the same camera. I don't even know which direction to point, to be honest, but the, the one of me is over there, it, it, over there as well. Now you can plug in anything to this, and that's one of the really great beauties about optical flow. If you haven't seen our previous video showing optical flow with the older version of Particle GPU, just a quick little introduction to it. It, what it does is it's basically some fancy math that can work on any kind of movie. So it, in this case, I have a little bit of alpha, but if you don't have alpha, you can plug in just straight raw webcam feeds. You can plug in movie files. And what it does is it calculates the direction of the movement and the intensity of the movement between frames. And these give us essentially movement vectors that we can plug into other effects. And this process of calculating these motion vectors is called optical flow. You might have even seen it if you worked with something like Premiere or After Effects where they have these optical flow effects or ability to blend between frames. So in this case I have my face right here, my camera feed, and the first thing I'm going to do is grab the particle GPU out of the palette here. Now, when you drag and drop this in, you'll immediately know if you're in the right version if the first thing you see are all of these leaves falling down and if you see five top inputs. So if you're running an older version of Touch Designer and this isn't what you see by default, make sure you upgrade to the latest version. And that version that just added support for this right now is 2022.28040. So make sure you're on this version of Touch Designer, otherwise this whole process is not gonna work for you. So now that I have this particle GPU, there's a lot of really great bug fixes that came to it and a couple of other features that we're gonna look at. There's a lot more inputs, a few more outputs, but what we're really interested in is this fourth input here. And if we hover over this top input, we can see it says optical flow. Now, if you've never worked with optical flow before, don't worry, it's very easy. The one thing we're gonna do is grab the optical flow tool right out of the palette here, which is right next to particle GPU, very conveniently and we're gonna drag and drop that into our project as well. Now the nice thing with this optical flow is what we can do is plug in our video feed into this, and what you'll see as I move left and right and up and down are these kind of green, red, and yellow outlines, because essentially what it does is it calculates this motion vectors that are happening, so it calculates the motion inside of my texture, and then uses the red and green channel to basically write which direction and how much velocity are things moving in in the X and Y space. Now the great part about how this is set up, and this is a great thing that Derivative done, has made it very easy to plug this right into the particle GPU. So I can take this optical flow, plug it right into this fourth input, and if I start moving around, you can already see there's a little bit of action happening inside of here. Now because this is 3D, there's a couple things you should know. The way that this process works is it essentially takes your optical flow force and cr almost you can imagine it creates an infinite length tube or extrusion of that force going back in Z depth. Because this is a 2D effect that we're applying to a 3D particle system, that's kind of the nature of making it easy to use and, and quick to use for a lot of folks, but it's just a good limitation to know. So what you're gonna see that we're gonna do today is also flatten our particle system a little bit just to help counteract some of the byproducts that occur when we're trying to kind of superimpose a 2D effect on a 3D area. Now, we're already gonna see that because we're looking at this particle system from an angle, it's a little bit difficult to actually orient ourselves and see what is going on. So I'm gonna open the viewer here of the Particles GPU, click inside, and I'm gonna hit H, which is gonna home that system and reset my camera to look right directly at it. Now, if I just zoom in here quickly, I can see that now my motion makes a lot more sense because I'm essentially looking at the same direction that the effect is being applied on but there's a lot of fun things that we're gonna do with this to make it actually feel much more interactive and 
something fun that you can really install anywhere, especially when we're talking about malls, museums, stores, public spaces. Optical effect is such, or optical flow is such a flexible effect that you can apply really anywhere. So what are we gonna do? First, I'm gonna grab the render output here. So I'm gonna put a null top after this. Hey there, sorry to pause the video, but I wanted to share something with you real quick. Right now you can get 50% off the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the most comprehensive touch designer community and educational resource of its kind. We've got over 150 hours of professional video trainings, a private community where you can ask myself and Matthew Reagan any questions and we answer those daily, as well as the first and only professional certification program for Touch Designer users. If you want to learn more, check out the description in the link below to learn more about the interactive and immersive HQ Pro, as well as claim your 50% off promotion. Remember, offer ends September 13th. And I want to set this as my background here. So that way I can just see it nice and big. Now, a few things we're going to do is first, we're going to increase the force because as we can see right now, I'm moving and it's really hard to tell what's going on. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can approach this. First, we can either open the parameters by hitting P on the keyboard to see our parameter window. We can go to our optical flow component and increase the force. So for example, I can say five instead of one. And now you can see my movements are a lot more defined inside of that particle system. And you can even see the visual representation of that is that the green and red outlines we were seeing inside of the optical flow viewer are now much more pronounced. Now, from my experimentation, I find that leaving this actually set to one is fine because I'm going to control the magnitude of these forces and how they're applied actually on the particle GPU component. So what I'm going to do is click on the particle GPU component and I'm going to jump straight to the forces here. And if we go right down almost to the bottom, we're going to see two parameters here, optical flow magnitude and optical flow size remap. Now this magnitude basically defines how much that force can affect and impact the particles in the system. So turning this up directly is going to result in more response to your movement. So for example, if I turn this up to something like five, you know, now moving my head, which I can kind of see is around this middle area of the texture is immediately giving us a really clear response. And if I start moving my hands up and down, we can see that response very clearly. Now, because we're in 3D, like I said, we're going to kind of flatten our particle system a little bit. We're going to take advantage of the fact that particle GPU can randomize the noise sizes so that it still gives the effect of having Z depth without actually having a lot of Z depth. Because remember, if we have a lot of Z depth, there's going to be perspective and it might look weird and strange if our 2D effect is getting kind of pushed back into a 3D perspective environment. So having this be a little bit flatter in 3D is actually to our benefit. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do here is actually change my emitter because what we can see now is that if I activate my particle GPU viewer and look at it from the top down, there's essentially a grid and it's just raining leaves from this grid. Now for our purposes, this is not very great. So what I'm going to do is replace this with a line that's just going to be raining particles right kind of in the middle of our field here. So a quick way to change this is we'll go to the particle source here and where our shape says rectangle, I'm gonna change this to line. Now when I change this to line, I can tumble around and just see very clearly that there's a line of particles. And what I'm gonna do is start to move this a little bit further away from just this little area of the center. And this is really gonna to start to come into play as we try and line up our kind of 2D original video feed with our particle system. So I can even just get started by saying move my point A, which is at minus two zero zero, which is right here. I can move that to maybe minus four zero zero. And now you can see that extends that line out to here. And I'll do the same thing on the right side and set that to position four. Now we'll probably come back and tweak this a little bit once we start compositing the 2D and 3D elements together. But just so you know, this is where you can easily do that. Now, if you were going to imagine this in 3D space, you can imagine that there's a line point here at negative four, and there's a line point here at positive four, 
but just be aware that these translate, you know, these transforms are being applied to this line. That's why even though our Y position in our line is zero and zero, it's actually three units higher than the center of the kind of particle system. So those are just things to be aware of, especially as you start to experiment, maybe changing the shape, adding other particle sources, just be aware of these other parameters here. Now, what we can do, I think, at this point is even start to try and line these two effects up, because as we can see, we have a very clear response to our system. I can see that my head is kind of right there. If I start to move my arms, I can see them in the side. So what I'll do is I'll create a composite top here. And I'm going to plug my NDI input to that composite. And I'm actually going to plug the output of my particle GPU. So I'm going to grab the first output again plug that into the composite. And what I'm gonna do is instead of using multiply, I'm gonna switch it to over. And right now I have my camera feed over the particles. Now this is where you can be creative and if you wanna find interesting ways to composite these two things together, by all means, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna put my particles on top of my webcam. That way I can easily find, line up, and get a good feel for the movement of my 2D camera versus the 3D particle system. Now, unfortunately, there is not an easy or automatic way to line these two things up. So what we're gonna do is use the interactive viewer of particle GPU, basically like a 3D viewer. We're gonna right click and drag, middle click and drag, and left click and drag to essentially line up our 3D particle system with our 2D texture here. So I'm gonna set that to the background. I'm gonna turn off the null one background. I'm gonna activate this viewer. And I can even just start doing some basic things like moving back and forth, looking to line up that area with my face here so we can see that it looks a little bit more natural. And I'm gonna do things like test the arm motion. Now it looks like the arms are still a little bit too low in comparison to the effect it's having on the particle field. So what I can do is middle, or sorry, right click and drag in this case down and I can keep testing and say, you know what? Getting closer, let me right click and drag a little more. And now this is slowly starting to feel better and better. Now don't worry if at some point the things get a little bit messed up, don't be afraid to just quickly hover your mouse inside particle GPU, hit H, and now you're gonna have that fully frontal facing camera again, and you can just do the process again. Middle click and drag to zoom in, start to move around, play around a little bit, maybe even middle click and drag in a little bit more. That's starting to feel pretty nice. Maybe drag it, right click and drag it down a little bit from here. And now it's starting to feel a lot more natural. We can keep dialing this in over time, but already something that we're starting to notice, and this goes back to our line position, is that there's a big chunk of space right here between where the particles end and where my webcam feed ends. So I'm gonna continue to extend that line all the way to the edge of my texture here. So I can go back to particle GPU and I can start to say, you know what, this was negative four. So maybe I'll go to negative six and positive six to stretch out that line. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is even though we started to extend that line, it doesn't actually extend that much further. Now this is because by default, there is a bounding box set up on the particle GPU. So we're gonna go back to the particles GPU page here and we can see the positive limit plane and the negative limit plane are set to four, four, and four and negative four, four, and four. So this basically sets up a four by four by four box in 3D space. Now in this case, because we're trying to push out beyond negative four on the one side and positive four on the other side, we also are gonna extend our essentially bounding box even further. So I can say, you know what, send this to negative seven and oop, not negative seven, I should say positive seven on this first one and negative seven on my other one. And now you can see that we're starting to get those particles falling all the way out to the edge and you can play with this till you get really the desired effect you want. I still recommend keeping the bounding box and not just fully disabling it because we could go to this hit behavior, turn this off to none, 
and then it would essentially act as if there is no bounding box. But I think in most cases for performance purposes, it is nice to have a bounding box just underneath the kind of camera feed or plane where you see those particles. So that way you're not basically spending all those resources rendering extra particles below the screen. So I like to have this fade out or die on contact. Both of those are pretty nice options. And now we're starting to see, you know what, this is starting to feel a little bit better. But one thing that we might notice is as we move on our X axis, things feel pretty good. The response is good. The way the particles are moving feels nice compared to the, my face or even my hands moving across the screen. But if I start to look at the effect going up and down, it kind of looks like there's a little bit of a ripple effect happening. Now this ripple effect is happening because the texture that we're feeding in to the uh, particle GPU coming from the optical flow is the same resolution and aspect ratio as my camera feed. And if I middle click on this, I can see this is 1.77 to one aspect ratio. So that's like an HD kind of 169 aspect ratio. Inside of the particle GPU, if I go to the forces page again, I have this optical flow size remap parameter. And what I find to work best for this without even needing to understand the math and the parameters and all this stuff, you're gonna get the best result if you set this to be the same values as your aspect ratio. So if for example, and you know, this is where multiple screens comes really in handy. I'm going to move this aside so we can really see this in action. If I move up and down here, we're going to see some forces. And especially on that side, you can see how it looks really chunky and, and big. If I open my parameters and make this 1.77, all of a sudden we can see a lot of that chunkiness is now gone and it feels much, much, much smoother. So I recommend experiment with that. Don't be set in stone. So changing that also just affects how the particle system feels. So by all means, get in there. Try 1.77. Actually, my head is in the way too here. Look at that. 1.77 to 1. I set that to my aspect ratio. But feel free to experiment. It does change the visual effect of the particle system. And there's really no right or wrong answers here. So now we're starting to get closer and closer to our final product. So a few things I'm going to do is, is right now, the particles are huge and they're leaves. And right now it's September, so you could get away with a leaf installation, but you're probably getting ready for all the Christmas stuff and holiday stuff coming up. So let's switch this to snow. So what I can do is go to my material here, where the texture says leaf. I can switch this over to snow. And if you've never worked with particle GPU, it's really flexible. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Even some of the built-in options can be useful. Circles can be nice. Put those through a feedback, get a really nice effect. We've got our snow, we've got our leaves. You could set this to uh, random characters, ASCII characters, which is pretty cool. Kind of like pushing around is one of those things, you know, the meme, wh what's he thinking? Oh my God, too much. To like <laughs> a lot of fun stuff you could do with this. Um, you can even also set it to custom and then drag and drop something like a movie file in texture. So for example, I can take the banana, drag and drop it onto that particle texture map and then have a jolly good time with bananas. But in this case, we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to stick to snow here. I'm going to delete my bananas. But the snowflakes are huge. What I want is maybe to have uh, the maximum size be about half as much, and then maybe even smaller sizes for the smallest of those. This is a great thing with particles GPU. I can come to the particles GPU parameters here, and my size type is already set to random between size of one and three. So maybe I'll make this a size of maybe 0.3 for the smallest and a max size of maybe two. Now, one thing to be careful of is this is not going to resize existing particles. So either you have to reset the whole simulation or just give it a second for those new particles to be born. And we can already see it looks a lot less hectic, a lot easier to see what's going on. A lot of fun we can have here. Now, a couple other things you might want to do with something like this increase the number of particles because that's the nice thing about making smaller particles is you can have more of them and I always find the more particles you have the easier it is for users to immediately notice the interaction see those vector fields and optical flow fields in action so we could do something like in this particle GPU page where we have birth and life of the particles let's birth 20 instead of 5 that's going to give us a lot more particles and we're going to have a lot more fun here pushing these around. And now we're Disney princesses, you know what I'm saying? 
So with that said, I think that gives you a really great starting point for implementing this much requested feature inside of Touch Designer, especially using this new Particles GPU. A lot of people were, were begging, I know myself included, to get this feature that the old Particle GPU had implemented into the new one. Now it's here and this is great because now we can take advantage of this really easy to use, flexible, interactive effect with a lot of the power that the new Particle GPU has with it. So I hope that gets you up and running easily, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Hey folks, thanks for watching. As I mentioned earlier, you can get 50% off the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only professional community and educational resource of its kind for touch designer developers. We've got over 150 hours of professional video trainings, a private community where you can ask Matthew Reagan and myself questions and get those answered daily, as well as the first and only professional certification program for touch designer developers. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description below where you can learn more about the interactive and immersive HQ Pro as well as join for 50% off. Remember, offer ends September 13th.